This is the second video in a line of three videos looking at the agar plates required practical. It's a triple science practical and it's looking at aseptic technique or also called sterile technique. And it's a way of growing bacteria and then using them in a variety of different ways to either identify the bacteria or identify different treatments for that bacteria. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So we have the question, which antibiotic is the most effective? And this is the same as the last video where I'm going to use the E. coli to grow some bacteria. And this time we're going to use one of these antibiotic discs, which has a different antibiotic on each of these parts of the paper. And we can then find out which one is best to kill this particular bacteria. This could be used if someone is ill and they maybe give a bacterial sample to the doctor because bacteria can be killed using antibiotics. And it could be that the doctor doesn't know exactly which antibiotic to prescribe because they're all specific for specific bacteria. So um, we're going to establish which one they should be prescribing. So let's move that out the way for a moment. So we've got our plate, it's upside down again. It's got that nutrient agar um, jelly in it, which is full of nutrients to allow the E. coli to grow. And that's completely sterilized. Um, it's been heated to a high temperature till it became liquid. And then it was poured into the plates and it's been kept in the fridge. This time I'm going to show you without the Bunsen, uh, I'm gonna show you one of these sterile um, it's kind of like a scraper, it, kind of, it creates what we call a lawn because it's like creating a lawn of um, bacteria over the plate there. So I'll turn the plate up the correct way. I'm going to use my E. coli again and hold that lid in my fingers. And I can sterilize that in the Bunsen. I'm not going to because I haven't moved it since I last sterilized it. And this time I'm just gonna put that into the E. coli and scrape across. Try not to talk too much, try not to pierce the jelly, just get a good coverage okay so i've got good coverage there of the bacteria and then i have my antibiotic dish which are kept in this container I'm going to place this onto the agar and just pop, push down on the different discs there. There we go, seems to be sticking down quite nicely. And I'm going to do exactly the same with my tape, create aerobic conditions by allowing oxygen in. See, we've got some condensation forming there already, so we're going to store that upside down. Now, what's good about using a permanent pen is that even though I've taped it, I can write over the top of that if I need to. I'll write my name. And the date, and we've got E. coli, and we've got antibiotics. Okay, so that's set up, and that's going to go in the incubator at 25 degrees C, which is the temperature we're allowed to store at school. If this was in a uh, a laboratory uh, where they're testing it for a patient, then they can use much higher temperatures. So they've got better controlled situation there 
uh, to make it safe. And then we'll look at the zone of inhibition. Probably won't for this one. We'll see how it goes if it does uh, grow the bacteria well and if, if those antibiotics do kill it. Um, and we we'll see the zone of inhibition. I mean, you can use pi r squared to work out that zone of inhibition and work out which is the best one to use to treat it. Could be that the best one is also the most expensive, but the second best is maybe a lot cheaper. So it might be more beneficial to use the second best if it is cheaper than the most expensive. So we've got cost and effectiveness to take into account when choosing the right antibiotic. Okay, I hope you found that useful, thank you. Here are the experiments from the E. coli experiment. This is six days later from um, putting the E. coli bacteria onto the agar plate and adding this disc of um, different antibiotics. And quite a lot of them haven't really had much impact. We've got a nice zone of inhibition on this one. This is probably the antibiotic to kill E. coli. Small amount of effect here, but mostly, um, turn over as well, you can see that big, zone of inhibition where you can see the table through it because the bacteria hasn't grown. Maybe a bit over here, but a lot of them have had no impact. You've got bacterial growth around that disc. Maybe some over here. That's the one that we're gonna do our work with today. Okay, so you can see the table through. That is the zone of inhibition. That antibiotic has killed the bacteria in that localized area. Okay, in order to calculate the zone of inhibition, we're going to use pi r squared. It's hard to find the radius on here because it's hard to know where the center is. So what I'm gonna do is go across the diameter of this one here, CHL, that we've decided has got the biggest zone of inhibition. And I'm gonna read across there with my ruler. And I think that is 17 millimeters so d equals 17 millimeters and divide that by 2 so r is 8.5 millimeters and then i'm going to square that and times it by pi and i get a zone of inhibition of 226.9. Okay, so that's my zone of inhibition, which is in millimeters squared, because it's an area. Okay, so the area that has been killed by the bacteria is 226.9 millimeters squared. Hope you found that useful. Thank you.